When you mention the word statistics to people, many people shake their head in disbelief about how complex these things appear to be. But the reality is statistics and quantitative decision making methods can be very simple if we have a look at them in a simple framework. So that's what I want to achieve in this particular video and that is explain how statistics work in very simple terms so that you understand the relationship between statistics and quantitative decision making methods and their practical application in business improvement. Let's take the simple situation where a barista makes cups of coffee in a cafe. Coffee temperature is a measure of the quality of that coffee, and we would refer to this variable as the Y variable. The term Y is a function of X, or what we would refer to technically as the transfer function, is a way of saying that the Y in this case temperature is affected by other variables, which we would refer to as the X's. In other words, the X's are variables that affect or cause variation in the Y. So as these variables change, they cause the temperature of the coffee to change as well. In quantitative decision-making methods, or statistics as we often refer to them, we have a range of common tools that we use, and they would include process capability, run charts, control charts, uh, normality testing, stratification, hypothesis tests, correlation and regression, as well as design of experiments. And these are the most common tools that we use, particularly in the world of Six Sigma and business improvement. The questions we need to master are simply what tools do we use and when do we use them? The actual use and interpretation of the statistics that are generated when we use those tools is actually quite easy. All you need to have available to you is a simple guidebook to follow, which gives you a checklist um, associated with the steps to apply in using the tool and how to interpret what's coming out when you're using software such as uh, Sigma Excel and Minitab. We answer the questions about what tool and when with a fundamental understanding, and that understanding is this. Some tools are for analysing the why. In this case, it would be coffee temperature while other tools are used for studying the relationship between Y and the X's that affect it. So let's start the conversation explaining how these tools work with a look at the Y. These tools that we've got listed here, process capability, run charts, control charts, normality tests, are generally used to study a variable of interest. In this case, it would be coffee temperature. Now these simple tools we can use to look at a single variable of interest and learn something about its variation. Now let's, like, let's look at the tools we use to study the relationship between the X's and the Y. The question at this point would be what variable X's potentially cause variation in the coffee temperature? So what we would do to answer that question is that we would bring a team of people together, particularly those who work within the process that we're looking at. In this case, it would be perhaps baristas or coffee making people. And they would brainstorm the question and come up with a list of potential X's. So in our scenario with the coffee temperature here, uh, let's say a team um, proposes that room temperature affects coffee temperature. They also believe that the different people who make the coffee, the baristas, also affect the temperature. Some baristas make it colder, some baristas make it warmer. The cup size makes a difference. The type of coffee they're making may have an effect on coffee temperature. The number of customers who are lined up at any point in time, who delivers it from the barista to the customer, the amount of hours worked by the barista, and the period of day, whether it's AM or PM. Now, when we look at these variables, we see they are of two fundamental types. They're either numerical variables or what we would refer to as categorical variables. And that's important to us because we need to understand that in order to understand the application of the statistical tools. Some of these fit in the category of numerical variables. So for example, room temperature, number of customers, and hours worked by the barista would fall within the category of numerical variable. If we have a worksheet of data related to this particular process that we're looking at now, as an example, then the data might look like what you see in front of you now. The coffee temperature would be lined up in a column here with temperatures underneath the heading. This is our Y variable. Now, the numerical variables are called numerical variables because the data that we would collect is in the form of numbers. So they're either whole numbers, so in this particular case the number of customers would be whole numbers, and hours worked by the barista or room temperature even could be fractions as well as whole numbers. So these are the numerical variables. 
other, other variables in this whole model here fit within the category of categorical variables and they would be in this case who makes it the different cup sizes the type of coffee who delivers the coffee in the period of the day now when we look at the data that we collect notice that categorical variables appear differently than numerical variables so they are clearly uh, in written form and the word categorical variable alludes to the idea that you could break the data apart by categories so you could separate all of the coffee temperature data here by who makes it you could get all of John's data temperature data and compare it to all of Kath's temperature data you could also do the same for the different cup sizes and the different types of coffee now all we need to do is the use of at this point is the use of the appropriate tool for the different variable types the relationship between the categorical X and a Y is analyzed by using tools that pull the data apart and compare categorical groupings so the different tools that would do this would be stratification type tools or hypothesis tests so if you've ever heard of one sample t-tests or two sample t-tests um, analysis of variance those types of uh, statistical tools are hypothesis tests and they all relate to analyzing the relationship between a categorical X and a Y. An example in this would be we could statistically compare the variation in temperature and the average temperature for each of the barista's coffees. So we could pull the coffee temperatures apart by who makes it and we could compare those. And we would use uh, some sort of hypothesis test in this case to compare those two. Now we can also look at the relationship between a numerical X and a Y using tools that study what happens to Y when the X value changes so this is a different type of analysis and a different way of looking at it we would in this case use correlation linear regression type tools and what they would do is study the relationship between room temperature and coffee temperature between the hours worked by the barista and the corresponding coffee temperature and an example of this would be where we would statistically determine if the temperature of coffee increases or decreases in response to changes in room temperature so what we're looking at is the correlation between variables in this case we're not pulling it apart like we do with categorical variables we're actually looking at a uh, up and down relationship between the pairs of variables to understand if one affects the other if one goes up does the other one go up or down in a corresponding response the finally the coolest tool of all that I want to talk about is the design of experiments and the design of experiments is very cool and it's unique in that it's a tool that can be used to analyze both categorical and numerical X's and their relationship Y all at the same time so it's a more advanced tool it takes a little bit longer to learn and understand but it's a pretty cool tool in that it does all of this in one chunk or one um, analysis if you like so in a nutshell QDM methods connect with the equation this y is a function of x in this way some tools look at the y and some tools look at the relationship between the x's and that y and all we need to understand is the different types of x's in order to determine the different types of tools so I want you to remember at this point the statistics is simple provided you know what questions you have and which tools help you answer those more information about these methods uh, are detailed in Process Master with Lean Six Sigma, which has its own website, processmasterwithleansixsigma.com, and AOBL's quantitative decision-making course covers all of the topics and tools presented in this video. Take care.